The vaquita is a porpoise that is known to live exclusively in the northern Gulf of California, Mexico. They are known to be the smallest porpoise living today, only growing to be about three to four feet in length. They're also the most endangered marine mammal. When I first learned about the vaquita in 2015, they had a total population of 59. Today, conservationists believe that there are only 10 left living in the wild. The primary threat? Illegal gillnet fishing. When I first learned about the vaquita in 2015, I visited San Felipe, Baja, California. It was a place my family and I would travel to every year since I was three years old. My parents and my grandparents had been doing this long before I was born. It was a family tradition. It's hard to explain my love for this place, but it's home to me in many ways. In our visit in 2017, I noticed there was something different about the place I loved. It was quieter. Normally, I would consider this place a sanctuary of peace with no phone service or access to the internet. I felt separated from the typical hum of the world, but this kind of quiet was different. There was something going on that felt hidden from the normal eye. When I finally got access to the internet, I found out that there had been a ban on gillnets in the efforts to save what remained of the vaquita. They were being entangled in gillnets used to catch other fish to sell onto the black market. The totoaba were the fish that had a large price tag on their head. It was illegal to fish them, but that hadn't stopped many fishermen from finding ways to financially support themselves. The vaquita were just collateral, something that would get caught on accident. Nevertheless, they were dying at an alarming rate. In 2019, I discovered a documentary was being made about the efforts to save the vaquita. I had met a crew member from Sea Shepherd while in San Felipe. The documentary, called Sea of Shadows, was made to shine a light on the vaquita, its dwindling population numbers, efforts to save the animal, and how drug cartels were dangerously involved. Mexico narco-traffickers call Totoaba the cocaine of the sea. The fishing of the Totoaba by Chinese traffickers and Mexican cartels is killing the vaquita. We have to take down those traffickers. The whole thing stinks. Who is? El Chapo of the Totoaba. There's some really bad guys here. They don't want to see us succeed. We will fight for every single life. We won't stop. Naturally, I took my whole family to go see the documentary in theaters that summer. But I left the theater feeling hopeless and like some of my questions hadn't been answered. What about the local fishermen who lived off the sea to provide for their families? What were conservation groups doing to help them? Sometimes it's hard to lose focus on the human aspect of conservation issues. Groups will willingly enter another country, permit a ban, and assume the rest will figure itself out. That's not entirely true. Dave Bader is a marine biologist and vaquita conservationist who works at the Marine Mammal Care Center in San Pedro, California. He's been working alongside other marine biologists and conservationists since 2015 to find viable ways to support both local fishermen and the effort to save the vaquita. So as we think about our conservation issues, we think about the totoaba, we think about the vaquita, we can't think of those in isolation. We have to think about those connected with the people in that space. So in 2015, where we had the, the gillnet ban that, that we all celebrated, I celebrated it, I thought it was an amazing thing. That was exactly what we needed. And then I went to San Felipe um, in 2016 and realized that it, we just shut down the entire economy of the Northern Gulf. And what are people going to do? You know, if, you, if your family is, is starving, you will do whatever it takes to feed your family. And people have been fishing with gill nets in the upper Gulf for generation upon generation. But it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to ask people to change. 
The initial goal was to protect vaquita populations by banning gill nets and removing ghost nets from out of the ocean. It was a good initial goal, but Bader says it didn't provide long-term solutions for local communities. Recently, organizations like Pesca ABC are making efforts to bridge the gap between conservation and local fishermen. Through developing sustainable and long-term solutions, they're helping support local communities while also preserving the vaquita. Their most recent solution? Training fishermen how to use alternative fishing gear that is both reliable and sustainable for protecting species threatened by gill nets. So this, uh, this type of gear is adapted for ponga fishing, um, and it's, it's at least a, the first type of alternative gear that fit a few of the criteria that, that other attempts weren't quite getting up to. The fishermen are excited about catching the same amount of shrimp without all the work, you know, less excited about the training that they have to do to relearn something, but um, we've been successful at finding some funds to support fishermen to test out the new gear. I think the first thing that people have to realize is that it, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the vaquita, um, that it really has to do with people um, and, and how we engage in our conservation solutions has to be pro-people. So if your long-term uh, goal is just to save the vaquita, then you're not going to be successful. First and foremost, you have to take ecosystem approach to things because animals need to live within an ecosystem. But then you have to recognize that people live within those ecosystems as well. And people are the root challenge to those ecosystems always. So if you're not working with those people to provide positive outcomes for those stakeholders, then, um, then you're doomed to failure. So what can we as individuals do about the problem? Bader says we should voice our concerns with our local government and personally support sustainable fishing efforts. There's no pressure being put on people outside of the communities to change any of their own behaviors. We can't let the, the most vulnerable within populations be the most responsible for making changes. Letting your representatives know that sustainability in seafood is, is what they want that regulatory authority to be placed upon imports of seafood. The other thing would be buy sustainable seafood. So put your own money where your, where your mouth is, right? And demand that there is a sustainability label on, on any kind of seafood that we eat. If you're interested in, in solving any kind of conservation problem and you're looking into actions that you can take, look to see that those actions are supporting change within communities that are positive for those communities.